Hi, Dr. Brian Heberlin here with Lexington ENT and Allergy, and I want to talk about salivary gland stones. So we have um, salivary glands in, uh, around our face that help provide saliva uh, spit uh, to our mouth, and so we have the parotid glands kind of in, run in front of and underneath the ears. We have the submandibular glands that are underneath our chin, our jaw, and then kind of deeper underneath there we have the sublingual glands on both sides. And so those are the major salivary glands. We also have these little scattered glands around the mouth called minor salivary glands that provide a little moisture to the surface themselves. But when we eat, uh, we need to make saliva so that we can help kind of digest our food, moisturize the food so that it can pass down our throats easily. And we have duct systems that drain those salivary glands to uh, drain into the mouth. And so the salivary glands, particularly the submandibular glands, and to some degree also the parotid glands, um, the saliva can kind of crystallize, or you can get a stone that forms within the salivary gland. And we don't really know why some people tend to develop these stones more than others. I kind of think of it as somewhat analogous to kidney stones, although you know they're not necessarily related in someone that gets salivary gland stones and kidney stones, but think of them like kidney stones. Some people just unfortunately tend to form those submandibular uh, gland or stones or even parotid gland stones, and they can obstruct the duct. When people have stones, sometimes the gland can get infected, but more often than not, it's just an obstruction, and so the gland will get swollen, Many times when you eat, the, the gland either in the face or in the uh, submandibular region will kind of puff up and get painful. And then, uh, you know, somewhat after eating, it'll kind of gradually start to settle down as the saliva is able to find a, a little bit of a pathway around that stone. These can be really challenging to manage. Sometimes if the uh, stone is just in the duct system where it passes into the mouth, you can kind of do a small procedure to open up that duct a little broader and to, to extract the stone. There are some techniques where you can use um, what's called sile endoscopy. That's a, a, where you pass these small, very, very small um, um, telescopes or, or endoscopes into that duct system to try to extract the stone um, with a little basket or, or break it up and get it to, to, to come out that way. Sometimes, um, the gland has to be removed, particularly when it's a um, submandibular gland. So uh, large, large stones that can't come out another way or if they're way back in the duct or in the, the gland itself and not in the duct system more anterior to that, um, the, the, the gland itself has to be removed. And so submandibular stones are the more common ones. Parotid gland stones are a little less common. Um, really sublingual stones don't seem to happen or at least I've never seen those. So. Uh, but salivary gland stones are a, a relatively common problem, we'll see, and we'll see people uh, have a lot of pain after eating. So if you have pain and swelling either right before or with eating, uh, particularly in the areas underneath the, uh, the jawbone or up in the face, that could be a salivary gland problem with either a stone or some other stricture or obstruction of that uh, salivary gland drainage system. So that's something we treat here at Lexington ENT and Allergy. Not always one of the easiest conditions to, to help out in people, but certainly something we see a, a lot of and are happy to, to see and evaluate patients for that condition. So thank you.